photographers, show of hands, do you enjoy exposing images or processing images? <laughs> Personally, I have way more fun when I'm out with a camera than sitting at my workstation. And what's your preferred image editing application? If you have a moment, share your answers in the comments, and I'll use your input to make decisions about upcoming videos. Well, so there sure are lots of photo apps to choose from, including several provided free by the manufacturers. That's usually to process the raw files you've taken in camera. Often you can't open or edit the latest raw version from new camera models. Even Lightroom, which I use, it takes a few months to get in sync with new cameras. So a manufacturer's proprietary editor knows the camera's features and settings, and probably does a better job of understanding what you did on the camera. But they're often clunky, unintuitive, and lacking in fundamental features. So quick disclosure, I'm not sponsored. Fujifilm, as will be obvious in a minute, did not play any role in this video. I downloaded Fujifilm's XRAW Studio desktop app. Both Windows and Mac OS versions are free, but it only works while a compatible Fujifilm camera is connected to your computer. According to Fujifilm, that's because the app uses the image processor in the camera. Fair enough. Now, before you connect, set the camera's USB connection. Uh, that will be slightly different from model to model. This is the X-T2 with firmware 4.4. Now, I connect the X-T2 to my Mac using USB cable and start XRAW Studio. Along the top, I can see that the app recognizes the camera, but although the list of source image folders includes my external drives, it doesn't include the connected camera. And in the menu, there's no import function. Huh? How did that not make it into the list of mandatory features? What is Fujifilm's workflow? So, remove the SD card from the camera and put it into my card reader. There it is, untitled. Now, some cameras label the card. Why doesn't Fujifilm? Then, even though it's a Fujifilm formatted card, I have to navigate down to the folder with the images. Most photo apps just read the whole card and display the images. Yay! They're now loaded as thumbnails. Uh, let's pick the raw version of a likely image candidate. And on the left, I can open the histogram, providing luminance and color channel information. And if you pass your cursor over the image, the readings for that point are displayed. Now, underneath, in the image info panel, let me slide that up so you can see it, is all the EXIF data, including the Fujifilm specific settings like film simulation and other recipe settings which were saved along with the RAW file. So at this point, we're not actually seeing the RAW file, but the version that will be output when processed using these settings. And why are some in shouty all caps? Images can be rated using the numerical keys 1 to 5 and then ratings can be used to decide which images to display. The thumbnail menu, I expected to find that under the view menu, provides a limited ability for file selection like showing raw only or filter by rating. There are view option shortcut buttons providing a closer look. The resulting display varies on your screen resolution. 1x provides a pixel to pixel display. Shortcut key for this is Z. As I said, by default, the same settings used in camera are already applied to the raw file. They're displayed in the conversion profile settings on the right. The settings can be changed to create JPEG images, and this is fairly similar to the in-camera raw processing with the same limitations. This image, taken with dynamic range of 400, can be reduced to a lower setting. But this image, taken with DR at 100, can't be increased. That restriction applies to other options. If you haven't selected the maximum in camera, you won't be able to increase it above the value used. And 
Although the film simulation can be changed, only the film sims in the X-T2 are available. It would certainly be nice if they added new film sims here, even if they can't be added to the camera firmware. However, having these options here makes it easier to see the subtle effects introduced by the Acros and Mono filters. Although the X-T2 does not have the Chrome settings available on newer models, and as a result they're not available here, their effect is also more obvious on a larger, higher quality monitor. White balance can be adjusted, but what's wrong here is there's no ability to capture a custom white balance. For instance, if you took a color reference image, it makes sense to use that for a custom white balance. There's a shortcut button for side-by-side, -side, before and after. Click Convert to save the image. A dialog disappears too quickly to make changes. So, no JPEG quality dialog, ability to rename the file or select a folder where the file is saved. I thought that might be in preferences. There is a file quality setting here and an alternate histogram option. What's also wrong is that the app can't crop and rotate. Well, not raw files. There is a crop and rotate mode, but it's only available for JPEG images, and then it seems like a totally independent module. Select and adjust to crop, rotate in 90 degree increments, and arbitrary amounts. Three tools here. There's a slider with a grid, numerical entry, or draw a level line. There's a nice touch angle. Now, you can't leave crop and rotate mode without saving the image, and somehow this dialog has save and save as, where file name and folder can be set. Then, using the file menu, a current image can be opened in other image editing applications. And the settings you've used for this image, your recipe, can be saved for other images in the app. Then, those options, identical to those available in camera, are all there is. I assume that lens chromatic aberrations and vignetting are handled automatically for Fujifilm lenses anyway. Uh, so, well, I didn't want to stitch panoramas, create time-lapse movies, or assemble focus stacks. But I would like some limited ability to adjust highlights and shadows beyond the very limited in-camera controls to maybe recover highlights or adjust the mid-gray point. The range available in highlight and shadow settings is very limited. And those limitations reduce the usefulness of XRAW Studio to a very small subset of the features you'll find in third-party photo editors. So, in effect, all XRAW Studio does is replicate the in-camera raw processing, and for me, that's just not enough. Now, it's not that there's no value. It's certainly useful while waiting for Lightroom raw processing updates for a new model, and to create alternate film sim versions. But it just completely baffles me that it can't import images, and that there's no save-as dialog, except for rotate. So, I'm hoping that someone at Fujifilm is making some notes. As I said at the beginning, I'm not sponsored by any camera manufacturer. I'm sponsored by viewers and subscribers who've decided to support this channel by becoming members. And that enables me to give you my honest opinion and to reduce the interruptions while you're watching. Member support means no ads either by me or randomly inserted by YouTube in my videos. <laughs> so I'm grateful to my members and invite you to join. Use the button below. However, my videos will remain free and I'll continue to read and reply to all of your relevant questions and civil comments. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay safe.